today I wanted to introduce you to macro photography. And this is the art of making little teeny tiny eensy weensy things look huge in photography. So we'll move along to the next slide. Here's a picture of the trumpet vine in my garden, which I love because it attracts a ton of birds and cool insects. As you can see in this photo, I've captured the vine and its surroundings, including a nice photo bomb from my dog, Roxy. And this type of zoomed out photo shows a lot of smaller things that are grouped together into a whole. And zoomed out is not macro, but wait for it. This next one, the bumblebee, is macro. Do you see how up close and personal we are with this little bumblebee? Something I appreciate about photography is being able to get up close and capture the fine, delicate details of things like insects and flowers. It gives me a stronger appreciation of the nature around me when I can see them up close. Bees look so fuzzy! I can see pollen collecting on this one's legs. I just love spying on their comings and goings. Another cool thing you can do for macro photography is take pictures of flowers. Here's a really beautiful but bizarre looking flower called a passion flower. And I got this picture, it's up close. Notice that the delicate speckles on the stems of the pistols and the frizzy curls of the petals are just so neatly put together. This dragonfly landed in our driveway and my husband got a really clear photo of it. Do you see how expertly all the parts of the dragonfly are put together? Kind of like the passion flower. It's just nature is so cool. Their wing structures are amazingly delicate but strong. And here's another sunflower. Inside the beautiful sunflower is an example of a spiraling design. If you are a math head or someone who really loves mathematics, the spiral is a visual representation of the Fibonacci sequence. So that's kind of a coolio thing to know. If you decide you want to take some macro photos, here are some tips. When you're shooting your own photos, start by getting as close as you can. I don't recommend using the zoom feature on phones and tablets if you can help it, because it generally results in junky, blurry photos. And a little note about Chromebooks. They are not awesome for macro photography because they don't have a very good resolution. If you have an actual camera, camera phone, or tablet, maybe try that instead. However, there is a photographer saying that goes, the best camera is the one you have with you. That means even if the only camera you have near you is a Chromebook, go ahead and use it. See what you can do with it. So another tip, tip number two, Here's a fail photo of a damselfly. I wanted to capture the iridescence of its wings because uh, they're kind of like a greeny rainbow, but the camera focused on the layer of space right behind it that includes the willow branch and the willow leaves. And, it, and blur means grr when we're taking close-ups. We want to see the tiniest details. And when it's blurry, we miss that magic that secret peek into these tiny but beautiful lives. So tip number three, hold still, and I mean still like a statue. If you have something still nearby upon which you can rest your camera, this is great. If you can kneel, prop your camera holding elbow on your knee for support. If you need to stand, tuck your elbows into your ribs. Tripods are tools that help your camera stand in place, and they can be really awesome, but that's some special equipment you will want to ask an adult to help you with before you go digging around in the closet and dragging it out without permission. Ha -ha. 
So another tip is about breathing. I know the tendency is to hold your breath while you're taking a picture, but um, you should really take your picture while you're exhaling or breathing out. Then you'll gently push your shutter button, and that's the button that tells your camera to take the picture. But even better would be using your countdown timer. This is why it exists, to help you take a picture with no movement or jiggle. Remember, blur means grr. You don't want a jiggle in your picture because then you will have no details. And finally, you can get fancy by photographing your subject through a magnifying glass or microscope to get really up close and personal. We've tried this macro technique with really small stuff like snowflakes here at our house, and it was really cool and intricate to get to see those snowflake patterns up close. So thank you, and if you decide you'd like to try your macro photography, please share and show us how it turned out.